I'm Vanessa Tyler and welcome to What's Eating Harlem where we cover the most exciting community in the world. There is so much going on here in Harlem. Let's get started. And Harlem is loving kale burgers. And this is my first time trying your kale burger. At Chai Wali, Indian spiced with an exotic sense of humor. And beauty products for beauties of color. One woman's quest to make us vibrant. Eyewitness News icon Melba Tolliver. She is the accidental anchor woman. And like every good reporter, she has a story to tell. All of that on this edition of What's Eating Harlem. Closed captioning supported by Chocolat Restaurant Lounge, 2223 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, Harlem. Everyone meets at the bar at Chocolat. Late night weekend dining too. Chocolat Restaurant Lounge. What's Eating Harlem funded in part by Cove Lounge. Situated in the heart of Harlem, it embodies the spirit and vitality of its community, delivering a unique blend of cool sophistication and urban edge. There is a new flavor in Harlem, the distinct taste of truffles in just about everything. Urbani truffles, just 24 hours ago in Italy underground and put on a plane exported worldwide, just landing in New York, now heading uptown. The Bonnie Truffles is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. Jammin' in Harlem's oldest live dive bar. Harris Blues, live music every night. Owner Mr. Alabama Sam Harglass will make sure you have a ball. Eat, drink, join the party. Harlem's own Harris Blues, 121st and Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, 7th Avenue, Harlem, is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. How's everybody feeling tonight? You feel good? Say yeah. yeah! Everybody is feeling real good this night in Chai Wally. Harlem's Indian spiced, intimate, eclectic, sexy spot. While the room grooves, the kitchen cooks with owner Anita Trehan, creating, scooping, stirring, and quite simply making magic. We have beautiful succulent shrimp to our base. My name is Anita Trehan. Uh, I I'm the owner, chef, and I like to say nourisher uh, of Chai Wali. And nourish she does. Every ingredient intentional, down to their curry leaf, which they grow themselves. I think food is a life. I really don't look at myself as a restauranter at all. I think the restaurant is a business and food is not. And I'm not in the restaurant business, I'm in the food business. Unlike most chefs, Anita didn't grow up in the kitchen. Back in India, her family had cooks, but she has something you cannot learn in culinary school. Everybody has a talent, and if I could, I figured out my talent after all these years, which is that I have a, a, an incredible palate, so I can recreate, I can taste something, um, and when I make a dish, I, I know what I want it to taste like at the end, not at the beginning. So I never start with the ingredients, I start, I start with the end taste on my tongue. And then I work backwards to make that taste happen. Anita also has a food philosophy. All of those catchphrases that everybody's using these days, farm to table, organic, sustainable, la 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 la, that's a given that food should be pure. Food should also cure, something she learned raising her daughter, who had severe food allergies. 
every kind of food allergy. Nowadays you hear about gluten free and you hear about this and that, but this was much beyond. And the only way we could, after all kinds of doctors, the only way we really healed her was through eating, eating the right thing. And I did not know. So we experimented, we ordered food in, and that's when my frustration came about because we could not, we hear about all these organic, healthy, either they're too expensive or they don't taste good. So she cooked and discovered, hey, healthy food can taste good. And this is the mixture that goes into our chai. So there's seven different ingredients that we make a powder. The chai in Chai Wali is a signature drink, a tea that Anita promises will fix what ails you. I'm telling you, if you have a slight cold or you feel unwell, you have one cup of this and you'll be fine. By the way, Wali in Chai Wali means woman. Normally, Chai Wala means man, but she is a woman who changed the name and changed the game. And as a woman, I feel that we are nourishers of our world. Uh, whether we have children, we have husbands, we have sisters, we have mothers, fathers, we are always the center of nourishment. This is her first restaurant, located at the corner of 124th and Malcolm X. There are no Indians working in the kitchen, all local employees. People told me about, you know, go to Lincoln Center here, then everything just didn't seem set right in my head. And I was like, no, I want to go somewhere new, and I want to go somewhere different. A friend of mine told me about Harlem, and I just walked the streets. I walked the streets, and I looked at the buildings, and I, most of all, I was so taken by the authentic spirit of the people. The space was a barber shop, and the upstairs dining room, law and accountant offices. Anita has made up a fantasy about the space in her head, which resulted in a rather eccentric decor and colorful story. It felt like an abandoned mansion. So I felt like people who lived here were people who had an interesting, well-to-do family. They had their own seal, they had artwork, and they gathered things, fine wines. But they all passed on, and when they did, the animal spirits that lived around their garden moved in. The animals are all around. A jewelry-wearing tiger watches from the walls. It makes you laugh, you know. You can't. The, the tigress on this wall, I've given her a name, Muchly. She's named after the world's most famous tigress. The uh, peacock at the back took me three months to have him taxidermy, and I bought him from a quirky man who, who gave me all these rules. I had to sing to the peacock, I had to dust the peacock, I had to be happy. This is our carrot soup, which has saffron and mint in it. Back in the kitchen, Anita prepares our feast. We are having masala fish, vindaloo lamb chops, black pepper chicken, and Chaiwali's unique customer favorite, their signature kale burger. Yes, kale burger. It's a good girl, bad girl burger because it's a little bit fried, it has avocado, so it's silky, and it's amazing. I think it's great. It's great. This is my first time trying a kale burger. So delicious. I really uh, liked it, and I like the avocado in it. We started off with the okra fries and the ceviche. I feel like food is something completely primal. When you take your first breath as a baby, the first thing you cry for is your mother's milk. It should wake up all of your senses. It should make you happy. It should make you, you know, put a sparkle in your eyes. You should, should put a tingle at the tip of your tongue. Baby, right there, I'm gonna take you in my arms. I'm gonna make you my own. Every person who comes in here, they tell me, thank you. It's not just a restaurant, they really feel cared for, like somebody really took the time to cook for them and thought about them. Harlem wants to get you involved. You have a story idea? Tell us. Go to our website, whatseatingharlem.com. There, you can sign up and become a member and get discounts to some of the places we feature. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. In that case.
For Desiree Verdejo, this makes perfect sense. To give up a career in corporate law to bring beauty to the beauties in her hometown of Harlem. I actually am originally from Harlem and moved back to Harlem a handful of years ago. Um, I was a lawyer uh, for seven years, actually, and, you know, it was a, a comfortable career, but I never fell in love with it. And my mind was always on beauty, and I always imagined that I'd be an entrepreneur. So um, the transition out of law and into um, launching Vibrant Beauty was actually a very natural one. Thus the origin of Vibrant Beauty off the corner of St. Nicholas and 121st Street. One writer called Vibrant a black girl's Sephora, but in reality, Vibrant Beauty caters to universal thing. beauty. Vibrant thing, a vibrant thing. Vibrant Beauty um, is a beauty boutique with skincare, hair care, and cosmetic products um, for women of all shades and hair textures. I felt like Harlem was missing a beautiful beauty destination, and it's such a diverse neighborhood with women of all colors, and I don't think many um, beauty retailers really cater to the broad spectrum of women, so that's something that you know we're really committed to doing. Catering to all with quality products. You know you can find your favorite products, but you can also find something that you haven't seen everywhere. There are items sold here you rarely see anywhere else. Most with ingredients that seem like the makings of a healthy meal. In a sense, Desiree is a curator, hand selecting each product. There are some brands that you will recognize on our shelves, but we're really committed to having independent brands, um, woman-owned lines. We have some Harlem-based lines, um, lines created by people of color. Like this nail polish line created by two African-American women made without the harsh chemicals. This line, for example, is Ginger and Liz, um, two New York-based women, both African-American. The line is vegan and it's also five free, so it's five, free of five toxin ingredients that are commonly in nail polishes. And then the colors are amazing. The passion to making us look good comes naturally. She comes from a long line of sisters who care about how they look. Beauty was always around me. I grew up with fabulous women in my family. My grandmother was this very pulled together, proud woman that like I never left the house without her lipstick, her red Revlon lipstick. So um, yeah, I've just always been surrounded by beauty. Vibrant Beauty provides the products and the facts. Desiree researches the products. Customers get an education and can touch and feel what they're buying. I also love the story behind the brands. You know, as a small business owner, we're working closely with the brands on our shelves. So I love the story behind the brands and, and I really focus on that as well. She is also focused on being in Harlem right here and owning her business right now. It's a personal. I am from Harlem and it's a neighborhood that's changing so drastically. And I want it to be part of the new landscape of Harlem. I wanted a business in Harlem. The six o'clock report in color with Roger Grimsby, Bill Butel, and the Eyewitness News Team. Good evening, I'm Roger Grimsby. Here now the news. New York's Eyewitness News Team was legendary among the iconic, memorable reporters. Melba five four was Melba Tolliver, unquestionably a role model for so many young women who know her history, especially young black women, including me, who directly attribute Melba Tolliver as the reason why they considered a career in broadcast journalism. Uh, we're all inspired by someone at some time, different points in our lives and throughout our lives. And, uh, but inspiration isn't enough. You might have seen me or you did see me, but it was all you that made it happen. She was clearly an inspiration, but came to be talent at Eyewitness News by accident 
AFTRA, the union for reporters and anchors, went on strike in the late 60s, Melba, who was a newsroom secretary, was put on the air. When the strike ended, she was given a job as a reporter. The rest is history. Being a general assignment reporter, going in every day, not knowing what the day is going to hold, where you're going to be sent, what's going to be happening in the city or in our viewing area. People that I had an opportunity to meet, things I, so much that I learned, it was like uh, going to school practically every day. Normally, reporters deliver the news. Because Melba was among the first, she made news too, when she decided to change her hair and was taken off the air. When I chose to uh, wear my hair in a natural, and I happened to be going to cover Tricia Nixon's White House wedding. This was in 1971. I was taken off the air. I covered the wedding and did the report, but uh, some of the reporting I was supposed to do in connection with it got canceled. Like, I was to come back, be live in the studio, that was canceled. I was to do the morning show with John Bartholomew Tucker, that appearance was canceled. And I was uh, like a, 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 a naughty kid who was sent to the principal's <laughs> office in a school because I had to spend a couple of days sitting in the general manager's office while they tried to persuade me to change back to having my hair straightened. I pronounce that they are husband and wife together. The news of what was happening seeped out and became, that became a story which intimidated the management at Channel 7 because they didn't want that bad publicity, even though they just decided right away to put me back on the air. Community pressure worked. Those were also the days of women reporters only covering women's stories. I covered the um, uh, women's uh, conference in Houston in, I guess it was, um, Oh gosh, I have just come back from Ann Arbor, but um, it was uh, 70 in 1977. All the leading feminists were a part of it. I remember um, Barbara Jordan, for instance, was there. Human rights apply equally to Soviet dissidents, Chilean peasants, and American women. I actually thought naively that this was going to become a political party because there was so much energy there uh, and, and, and determination and, and, and an attempt to really be representative of America. Uh, Bella Abzug, uh, as I said, uh, Shirley Chisholm, Gloria Steinem, Gloria, of course, yeah. But I never even hear anybody mention that conference. She reflects on the news today, which she says is superficial. And considering the serious nature of so much news today, I, I think it's almost criminal to have these uh, make bites of news. And the topics covered then still remain the issues today. The Kerner Commission report after the riots of 1968. If you were to read that report today, it is, it, you could say you're reading about what's happening now in uh, in uh, Ferguson, in Baltimore, in Staten Island. And it's so, it's kind of like, when do we just wake up and pay attention and carry things forward instead of going backward and repeating it as if things never happened before? Melba Tolliver is putting all that news experience and as a cancer survivor, 76 years of life experience into an upcoming book titled Accidental Anchor Woman, Memoir of Chance, Choice and Change. She has worked at several other stations since her Eyewitness News days. Things sure have come a long way since film was sliced. She thinks the technology has improved, but the role of women is taking a step back. I'm going to tell you frankly, Vanessa, one of the things that bothers me a great deal is the um, objectification, objectification of women in the news. I, I just can't believe it. I think women uh, on, on programs that I've seen from the morning talk shows to news shows to local news, I live in Pennsylvania, that women are dressed like they're going to a cocktail party. Um, the cleavage, the uh, thighs showing, uh, we've come a long, 
We've come a long way, baby, and a long way sort of in the wrong direction. Her memoir will talk about women in newsrooms and her early life. She was actually trained as a nurse before taking that newsroom secretary job. Even though she was born in Georgia, with her early years in Ohio, her formative years were spent living in Harlem. Accidental, Accidental Anchor Woman, yes. a memoir of chance, choice, and change. And I talk about uh, growing up in the, uh, not growing up, but spending time in the Dunbar and, and actually living there. And um, it was an opportunity to research <clears throat> some of the history of the Dunbar, why it was built by the Rockefellers. It actually was a co-op in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it had a daycare center there, a bank back in the early days. Some of the people that have lived there, uh, Bill Bojangles Robinson. Um, and you know it's named for the poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Wow. Um, oh, the Robesons lived there. Uh, There's um, a lot of history. W.E.B. Du Bois lived there at one time. Wow. I've known Melba Tolliver for many years. She is truly a remarkable lady who has had a truly remarkable career. She is a pioneer and an iconic African American in the highly competitive field of television journalism. She has been a role model for a generation of black television journalists who followed her lead. On this night, she is getting an honor from Empire State College she was an adult student there who went back to college to quench her constant thirst for learning. Today, she lives a quiet life, surrounded by the Delaware River and her many books. I, I moved to uh, where I live now, which is Bangor, Pennsylvania. It, it's, it's Bangor, as in Maine, but the people in that area call it Bangor. And uh, they also say Crick rather than Creek. And, and they're not hayseeds. <laughs> Although I live really sort of in the middle of a cornfield. <laughs> Those of you who know me know that I've been working on a book which I've titled Accidental Anchor Woman, a memoir of chance, choice, and change. Chance, choice, and change. As I see it, these are the threads that constantly interweave and create the tapestry of our lives. Melba Tolliver, a pioneer, one of the first. The important thing is not being first, it's making sure you're not the last. And it's also saying, what difference did you make? Yeah. A positive difference. That's all the time we have for now. Join us next time on What's Eating Harlem. I'm Vanessa Tyler. See you uptown. Closed captioning supported by Chocolat Restaurant Lounge, 2223 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, Harlem. Everyone eats at the bar at Chocolat. Late night weekend dining too. Chocolat Restaurant Lounge. What's Eating Harlem? Funded in part by Cove Lounge. Situated in the heart of Harlem, it embodies the spirit and vitality of its community, delivering a unique blend of cool sophistication and urban edge. There is a new flavor in Harlem, the distinct taste of truffles in just about everything. Urbani truffles, just 24 hours ago in Italy underground and put on a plane exported worldwide, just landing in New York, now heading uptown. Bonnie Truffles is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. Jammin' in Harlem's oldest live dive bar. Harris Blues, live music every night. Owner Mr. Alabama Sam Hargrass will make sure you have a ball. Eat, drink, join the party. Harlem's own Paris Blues, 121st and Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, 7th Avenue, Harlem, is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. To become a member of What's Eating Harlem, go to www.whatseatingharlem.com and sign up for special events like wine tastings and food tastings. Also, join us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you have any ideas for stories about Harlem, send them to info at whatseatingharlem.com